Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to the Preacher's Corner. I'm Pastor Jay, and today we're going to be diving into 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, and we're going to get a chance to take a glimpse at that old devil. He's going to pop up today, as well as uh, some really important realities, some important truth that existed in the, the beginnings of the church, of the old day as it was, but not so much in the church today. And so we'll dive into those discussions and bring out what we have of the Word of God and rejoice in it. Father, we thank you and praise you. We ask you to bless us today as we dive into your Word. We may be able to discover some truths about the pulpit today. Some truths about uh, Bible colleges and seminaries and some truths about the way in which we as a people respond to the Word of God as preached in truth versus the way that we manipulate the Word of God as preached for our own entertainment or desire. And Lord, we'll give you thanks and praise for the way you work in us, with us, and through us in these moments. In Jesus' name, amen. So here... We begin in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. I'm going to read down just for a, a couple of verses, probably for verse 1 to 5, just to start us off today. And the scripture would go forward and say, Would to God you'd bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom, you have not, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest of apostles. Very important to catch the, the desire, the, the drive that Paul has to keep this people uh, unto Christ. Not unto the apostle Paul, but unto Christ. He has such a vehement heart for Jesus and for the Word of God. And, and he knows the importance of a people being, being grounded, just as we were talking about in Sunday's message yesterday, about being rooted and about being built up and established in the Word of God. If you know the truth from the true source, then lies are easy to discover. Lies are easy to see in most cases, as it would be lest you have a really, 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 really good deceiver who's actually going to use the truth to manipulate the point in order to be able to draw you into a lie. Now, that is entirely possible, and that is Satan's main method of operation, is taking God's word and twisting it just enough over a period of time to cause a people to fall away from the truth by being deceived through truth being mixed with lies to bring a people out on the other side to an absolute lie. But the, the reality is, is if we dedicate our hearts unto the Lord, then we're going to discover that, that drawing us away from Christ is going to be quite complicated. And the reason why is because of the things that the Apostle Paul lists here. It's not just a knowledge of the Word of God that keeps us grounded in Christ. As he would reveal in verse number 4, he says, If he that comes to you preaches another Jesus. Now, there are a whole lot of other Jesuses in our modern society that are being preached under the name of Jesus, such as call upon Jesus for anything you want, and if you're good enough, you'll be able to receive it of the prosperity-minded gospel, such, <laughs> such as the the Jesus that will that we rub the bottle and Jesus will pop out and you can get deliverance for whatever it is. Uh, faith healers uh, utilizing the name of Jesus while while fooling thousands of people watching a television program from fake healings and things that aren't true. So you, you'll find that there's a lot of other Jesus that are preached in, in, 
even to the point of of people like David Koresh back years back with that that Davidic compound there that was in uh, Waco, Texas, or or all oh, Jim Jones even all of these different psychos that that made themselves out to be a figure of Jesus to be followed only to kill all of their disciples. So you know that there's a lot of different Jesuses that are being proclaimed, even within the pulpits of those churches which claim or seem to be Christian, where where Jesus' name is used, but the there is a drive for something else, such as a drive for works uh, aside from Jesus in order to be able to be saved, or that, that drive to to proclaim Jesus, to keep a people considering the idea of you being Christian, but venerating other characters above Jesus in the salvation chain. Uh, a lot of different Jesuses that are out there. And the Apostle Paul says, so if there's a person that comes and they preach another Jesus, well, in order for us to really be solid on our beliefs concerning who we follow as being Jesus, We've got to be a people that drive into the Word of God. We've got to be a people who know Jesus from the proclamations of the Gospels, from from the reality of the seed of Revelation chapter number 3 that is promised, the prophecies that would proclaim our Savior. We've, We've got to know Jesus by the Word of God because he said, if he that comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. So we got to know the, the, the true Jesus of the word of God. But he goes on to say, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received. Now, this is, this is another level of danger to the believer because most people, maybe you've, you've grown up, maybe you've studied the Bible even, you've got the idea of Jesus, but you have no clue about the, the, the spiritual warfare that's happening around you and it be those spirits which can come into you that can disrupt you and, and draw you away or lead you astray. So Paul's warning us that there is a very evident danger to us, these spirits, a spirit that can come into you that is not the Holy Spirit that can lead you astray from Jesus. So that's why I said it's 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 more than than just Jesus, though Jesus is the most important piece to this puzzle, the most important part. Yet there are other elements that can cause us to be drawn away instead of just the preaching of another gospel, well, another Jesus. We'll get to that other gospel in a second because that's a whole nother level. But there's other Jesuses out there, and, and the drive to draw you away from the truth is to present another Jesus as he is in truth to pull you into that falsehood. And so you've got... Two people claiming two truths that are that are opposed to each other, then it would come down to recognizing the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always, always, always going to go to the Word of God, go to the true Jesus, the true uh, reality of the gospel. And so, so the Holy Spirit of God will draw you to Christ, just like He said. In, in the scriptures, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So it's that draw of the Holy Spirit to holy God, to the holy word, to, to Jesus. But there are also competing spirits. And people get wrapped up in spirits all the time, and they don't even realize it. If you can easily sacrifice, like coming up here is coming up on uh, February really soon, and if you can easily sacrifice the the house of God, the Word of God, and the fellowship of the saints on a Sunday simply because it's Super Bowl Sunday, and you you've devoted yourself to that game more than you've devoted yourself to God, then you have been drawn away from Christ, away from the Spirit, 
of the Holy Spirit and away from the gospel by another spirit to another thing that is going to be venerated even more than salvation is venerated, more than Jesus. And so you, you got to realize that spirits are, are plentiful. More than a third of the stars fell when Satan lost the battle, and they have a great power of manipulation over the hearts of man without question. And so that you wouldn't even begin to realize that something so simple as, as a football game could draw spirits to it that would manipulate and control whole populations of people, but not the lost. The lost need no manipulation because the lost already belong to their passions, lusts, and desires. They do not have the, the answer of the gospel to give them another way. They just have the, their lost estate, their passions and desires. No, the, the, the society that I'm referring to in this nation would be the people that claim to be Christians who have been drawn away from the Holy Spirit, drawn away from the Word of God, the house of God, drawn away from God himself by these other things as their hearts have been manipulated by other spirits. And so it's very important to realize that, the, that Paul, he's giving us a warning that we really, really need to pay attention to here. He said, if he that, that comes to you preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received as in previously, you get saved, the Holy Spirit of God moves in and seals you, but there's always going to be some type of competing spirit that exists to war against the Holy Spirit inside of you. And if you're not careful of paying attention through the Holy Spirit of these other things that are pulling at you, you so easily, through the operation of your flesh, can get roped in to those other things. Now, the danger of that is, is that when you get roped into those other things, that you're grieving the Holy Spirit inside of you because you're no longer listening to the Holy Spirit, but this other spirit that has drawn you away from the things of God to go chase after the ways of the world. And when you grieve the Holy Spirit... There is a, a, a communication that's happening between the Holy Spirit and the Father in heaven. And in the, in the grieved estate of the Holy Spirit, it, it, you know, there's an action of God that may come down upon you. And indeed, there may be reasons why some people are sick, why some people do struggle, why some people do suffer in this life is to try and, and wake them up to the fall that they've had so that they will hear the Holy Spirit once more, get their life straight, get repentance right, get, get back on track with, with Jesus and, and separate themselves from those things just as revealed in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1, those things which so easily beset them from walking with God, those sins that caused them to fall. Uh, most times, just like I was talking to a gentleman in church just yesterday, I said most times you've you you've not seen a one person get up and 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 find themselves walking down that aisle to that 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 those steps at the altar to be able to just pray for repentance and say, Lord, man, I mean, I've I've been living a life for the last several years and I've yet to to truly just dis repent, and, and you've yet. It's not likely that you've ever experienced a church that, that the whole of the congregation would come unto a recognition by the Holy Spirit in one moment. Now, keep in mind, every single person in the house should be. Now, I don't believe that they are personally, but they should be. Every person in the house should be filled by the Holy Spirit of God. The church is the, <clears throat> the place where the children of God gather together to meet with their father. I mean, that, 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 that's the meeting house. And so they should be filled with the Holy Spirit. But you've never seen a congregation. I have heard of some. 
I can't say it's not all congregations. I have heard of some. But I've been praying for a congregation that, that would recognize it, that, is, that has been drawn away from God, that it recognized that in this world today, the spirits that abound, that, that, that they just gather together down at the altar, the whole congregation, and seek the Lord in repentance. And in the moment of a service, just, just everybody come down and acknowledge, you know what? We, we have all sinned and come short of your glory, Father. We, we want to get right with you. But it's not likely ever to happen. Why? Because most lives today in the United States are manipulated by other spirits. I'm not saying that they aren't saved people. Indeed, I do believe that a lot of them are saved. I do believe that a lot of them did have a beginning testimony and had served the Lord for a period of time. But that that rather whatever it was that, that that began to challenge their their participation in in the weekly services whatever began to challenge their daily reading of the word of god or their daily consideration and prayer of, to the lord what, what whatever it was and there is a plethora of things but whatever it was that began to challenge them uh, and in their connection and relationship with Jesus, they succumbed to it once. And then it became really hard to connect with Jesus uh, after that. And, and then they succumbed to it twice. And th th the next thing you know, the third time is is a perfect fall because it was so it was hard to succumb to it the first time, but the second time was a little easier. The third time, no-brainer, and the next thing you know, they're gone. They, they don't even come to church. They, they, they don't pray. They, they haven't read their Bible in months. I mean, they're just completely gone. And what drew them away from that? And the reality to that answer to the question is, is that it is spiritual in its warfare. It were it was spirits that that drew them away and and the spiritual connection to these other passions and desires that their flesh really had a connection to but but it's those spirits that keep them at bay and the war happens within the heart of man between these spirits and the holy spirit of god the more you listen to the uh, uh, the other spirits and the less you listen to, to the holy spirit of god the more entangled you become now with the grieving of the holy spirit as being a child of god there will be a suffering you cannot expect your father in heaven just to sit back and say oh well you know they'll they'll get theirs in time if they don't straighten out that's not a good parent at all Matter of fact, we have that style of parenting here in the United States, and it's produced some of the most train wrecked generations we've ever seen. No, you're going to find that our Father in Heaven is not afraid to spank us. Our Father in Heaven is not afraid to jerk us up by the by the nape of our necks and 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 really do some disciplined work uh, upon us. And so that you you will realize that when you grieve that Holy Spirit and when you struggle uh, in your faith as being separated from it and being drawn away to these other things, that if indeed you belong to God, you will be dealt with. There's no question about it. You will be dealt with. Those who can so easily... Though they claim to be a child of God, and though they, they may have showed up for years, and though they may have, have done a lot of things with the church, but then can so easily drift away from the work of the Lord and from the, from the presence of, of His house, and, and, and not suffer anything, not have any problems, it is to be a testimony within itself that you never had. A connection to Christ. It isn't that you had your salvation and then you ended up losing it. It's that you never had it because it was so easy for you after a period of time to drift away. So what was church about? Well, it was about connection. It was about people in the community. It was about a feeling of belonging. It was about a whole lot of other things, but it wasn't about the genuineness of actually receiving Christ and being saved because a person who can so easily just walk away from the faith when, they, when they've done so much in it and done so much for it, but they walk away without care and then even 
to to proclaim I don't believe in that stuff anymore is to have never believed in it to begin with. Because a person coming from a child, coming from a person like me who didn't grow up in a church, who didn't have the constant influence of of people in church and and messages rather lukewarm, weak, or or strong, it doesn't matter of of the gospel that would be presented. I didn't know any of that stuff. And then coming into a, a reality of of finally meeting Jesus for for the first time, which took three years of of solid, powerful gospel preaching to crack this this thick skull. He gets in, the gospel gets in, the Holy Spirit moves in, and never, never from that time of the 29th of June in the year of 2000 would I ever even dream of of inviting or, or, or causing other things to come and occupy my heart. Never would I consider that. I, I know what Jesus has done. I know what Jesus can do. I, I know his presence. I know his authority, his power. And, and praise God, I'm on his team. <laughs> that That's phenomenal that he would be willing to take somebody like me on to his, his staff as it was, to serve him and to, to proclaim him. Guys, a, a, a genuine Christian knows where they've come from. The, they know what they've been delivered from. They they know the dangers of the world around them, and they recognize really quickly. They recognize the the spirits that exist that draw people away. And oh man, never, never. It, it it's just a condition of the heart. So if you can easily just walk off for years without even giving a consideration to the church, it doesn't matter. And you can comfortably go back into those lifestyles that you supposedly separated from and it doesn't even bother you, then you need to get saved. You've never been saved. I don't care that you prayed a prayer. A prayer can't save you. I don't care if you agreed to a batch of scriptures at at an altar. That matters not. It's the conversion of the heart and the recognition of the sin nature that exists within it is the repentance of the genuine repentance. Remember, Esau was a gentleman that sought repentance with tears and couldn't find it. So it's very important to realize that just because you agreed to a, a section of scriptures like the Romans Road, and just because you prayed a prayer after somebody by repeating after them every five words, and just be, because you climbed into a baptistry tank and somebody said, well, congratulations, you're saved, that means nothing at all. For if the Holy Spirit has not impacted your soul that you knew in that moment, that, that you were born again. I mean, before I even uttered the words to pray unto God, and my pastor, he didn't need to be there to lead me through no prayer. I knew exactly what I needed to talk to God about. And that, I believe, is genuine because before I even uttered the words of a prayer, the Holy Spirit had already done His work in my soul and in my heart. And the words that were uttered came out of my face were the words that that were genuine and true to the leadership of the Holy Spirit that is already in there. And so if you need man's intervention to tell you what you need to say, then you don't have Jesus leading you. You've got that dude. And the reality is, is that uh, verse number four is proclaimed to us. He said, if he that comes preaches another Jesus, what a danger. Or you receive another spirit. Or, in the final point of verse number four, another gospel. Another gospel. Now, Corinthian church is not the only church that Paul was, was up on this. In the churches that were located in the region of Galatia, which were seven churches, that were in Galatia to the letter to the Galatians, remember in chapter number one, uh, beginning about verse number seven, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from the gospel of Christ unto another gospel. And then he goes on to explain it. He said, which is not another gospel, but there will be some who would come and pervert 
the gospel of Christ. Well, from that letter written to the Galatians also is tied into this point he makes with the Corinthian church. He said, if, if you have received another gospel, which you have not accepted, in other words, that you didn't originally accept, but now it's being invited in. Now it's it's things are changing with your belief system, so the different gospels that are out there could be brought in and, and manipulate the way that your changes are, are completed. He said, if, if you have another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. And the bearing with them is the abandoning of Christ, of, of the true Christ. Now, it doesn't mean that these other people with their other gospels, with their other spirits, aren't using the name of Jesus. Well, keep in mind, during the times of the gospels and during the times of the writing of the, of the book of Acts, at the beginnings of, of the church, there was more than 14 different people that were, were even re recognized in Scripture whose names were Jesus. Right, so so you you could be following another Jesus. You got to get that straight. You got to listen to that preacher. You got to check that gospel and make sure that what is being proclaimed is true according to the scriptures, is right according to the prophecy. You can't just trust the New Testament. You got to bring Old Testament in this because Jesus was recognized all the way back in Genesis chapter number three was revealed throughout the prophecies of Joseph's life, throughout the prophecies of Jacob's life. Throughout the, throughout the prophecies of David's life, uh, there are so many different characters that that are Christ characters. You got to you got to see those. You got to learn those. You got to see the prophecies of Isaiah. You got to see the prophecies of Jeremiah, of Zechariah, of Micah, of Malachi. You got to you got to know your Bible to know your Jesus. And it's so easy when a people say, "Oh no, the Old Testament has been abandoned and the law has been abolished." Uh, so we don't we don't need to utilize all of that. That's just a place mat for the book that you have. We are of the New Testament age, and so we will only study the New Testament gospels and the New Testament letters. It's like really, you just cut out two thirds of who Jesus is by doing that. <laughs> you don't you don't even know Jesus because you don't know the realities of the connection of who he is in the Old Testament. What about Melchizedek back in in Genesis whom Abraham paid a tithe to? What about what about these these people, these these Christophanies, these moments where it is believed that this is Jesus standing on earth before his birth? What about those opportunities that avail themselves that only exist in the Old Testament. You know nothing about Jesus if you don't know your Old Testament. But there is another Jesus that exists in our society today as revealed through the prosperity gospelist. And there's another Jesus beside that Jesus that is revealed today in the faith healing uh, cruise. And there's another Jesus beside those two Jesuses today in the word of faith and, and hunting down all of these great gifts and everything else. There's, there's so many other Jesuses that draw people entirely away from the truth of the gospel to begin with that their hearts could be transformed by the renewing of their mind because they're chasing after powers. They're chasing after these gifts. They're chasing after all of these other things that are not Jesus, and that is the principle behind the movement that, that, that exists. They're chasing after wealth. They're chasing after healing. They're chasing after all of these things that none of these people can provide. They can't provide them. And, and, and yet they're chasing after these Jesuses in the United States, and of course the country is collapsing under the weight of the darkness, of the evil that, that is evident, that is existent. Because nobody, not the believer, nobody is, is in that light that is illuminated by the gospel and by the truth of Jesus. It's a whole lot of other spirits, but not the Holy Spirit. You might well bear with him. Well, in, in the time that I've got, I want you to look down from, from verse number four. There's a whole lot of good stuff in the middle of this, by the way. Don't miss this chapter, but I've got to cover some uh, pretty hardcore highlights. He says, uh, verse number 10, he says, As the truth of Christ is in me, 
recognized by the gospel that is preached, recognized by the work that is done, recognized by the evangelism that, that is done, as the gospel of, or the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of, regions of Achaia, of, of boasting of Jesus, boasting of the work of the Lord, boasting of the the, the the power of God. I mean, all of these things, which I truly enjoy boasting about too, because it's amazing to me that, that, that just that God would even consider taking somebody like me. I mean, that I'm never going to stop talking about that. And it comes down uh, a little bit further into verse number 13, and we'll cover from verse 13 to verse 15, because I want you to meet that old devil. I want you to meet the challenge of this whole uh, this whole afternoon uh, and the reality that pulpits could be filled with devils you know the the pastor of a pulpit is just the the frame of a man that that that's not revealing the character of the the nature or spirit that be inside of them and the, the cemeteries, as I often refer to them, but the seminaries or the Bible colleges of today and majority are not training uh, pastors to be genuine expositors of the, of, of the Word of God or gen, have a genuine heart and connection to Christ through the, the teaching of the Word of God. They're teaching them how to put on the entertainment. They're teaching them how to be a mega church. They're teaching them how to put on the show in order to grab the senses of people and manipulate the hearts of people, but not draw the people into a genuine relationship with Christ. More about the show than it is about the the gospel. And so you'll find that the, this isn't something new. Even in the days of, of the apostles, there was already this challenge. Wherever there is truth of righteousness in the Holy Spirit, there's always going to be the antithesis of the spirits that have fallen from, from their heavenly estate following Satan. And, and those spirits are going to be out there until the time of God's reclamation. Their spirits are going to be out there uh, combating against the Holy Spirit, trying to draw the world unto Satan, and, and this is something that's going to have to be dealt with. And the main way that these spirits will accomplish their task is through mankind, more specifically to cause the believer to fall or to keep a person back from believing. How are they going to do that? By the gospel. He says... Verse number 13 to 15, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Uh, the danger, it, it, just because a person can, can fill out a piece of paper and write a resume really well, doesn't mean that that person is, is connected to Christ. Now, don't get me wrong, they may be fully qualified to be able to take the pulpit. They might have their doctorate of ministry or a, or a doctorate of philosophy, a PhD. Maybe they have a, a master's in divinity, and so they have impressive credentials, and indeed, they've gone through enough schooling to be able to craft a good message. They've learned how to do public speaking. They're capable of captivating an audience, and, and, and so these people... It's not that they aren't capable of, of looking exactly like, sounding exactly like, acting exactly like. But the problem is, is just acting. That's the scary thought. The apostles of Christ are the servants of the Lord, pastors as it was uh, in this case for the pulpits. He says, for such are false Pastors, they're false apostles. They're deceitful workers looking for that cash, maybe, or looking for that notoriety, maybe, looking for that fame of the television scene, maybe. But they're, they're deceitful workers. They're transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. But this is the point in verse number 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. We really got to remember that Satan at in his original estate was literally at the throne room of God. He's recognized as a cherub 
and and the cherubim are the four creatures that are holding the four corners of the throne of God. And so as being recognized by Ezekiel as well as being a cherub, that he would have been there with his name in Isaiah chapter number 14 being recognized as Lucifer. Lucifer recognized as a light bearer, which is what his name actually means, is that he would be in the presence of God so closely that, that his duty was to bear the light of God. I mean, it's, it's that close. And so you understand the, the draw that he has with all of this angelic base as, as recognized as a third of the stars of heaven fell in Revelation chapter number 12, and so that his tail wrapped around them as it was revealed, so that he has such a, a, a manipulative power, such a manipulative mind that he would, he would cause a third of that number to follow him in a coup attempt against God, in which case they all got kicked out of their natural estate. And so, but it isn't a surprise that, that he, he doesn't reveal himself as an angel of light. That was his original estate. That is how mankind will be deceived, how they will be drawn. It, they, they're not going to be drawn by, by a red figure with horns and a pitchfork tail uh, looking to stab you to death. It, they're not, they're not going to be drawn by a monster, but a beautiful musical creature? Yeah, that's going to snare us every time. And Satan's greatest manipulative tool is music in our lives today because music has power through spirit to, to literally drive us, to manipulate us in a lot of different ways. And so you'll find that he transforms himself from what his estate is now, hell-bound, unto that original estate that he fell from so that he can manipulate your heart. And his manipulation tool comes through a battle of the Word of God, a challenge to people just like he did with Eve in the garden that, that the Word of God would be, be brought up and then debated from the devil's advocate side of things. We even use that term to say, I'm going to be the bad guy on this, this debate and see how you hold up. Well, you've got this situation where, where he literally will take the truth and then bend it. He tells Eve, no, nah, you surely won't die. Then he tells Eve, the only reason why God doesn't want you to eat this fruit is because he knows as soon as you do that you'll be equal to him as being gods yourself. You won't need him anymore. Well, this is the power of Satan in his manipulation. This is the way his false apostles lie and manipulate people's hearts. This, this is how his, his work is in our lives today. And it's so easy to fall for him. He says in verse number 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also would be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You've got to be really attentive, not just to the person, but to the spirit. You've, you've got to be prepared to discern the spirits. And, and some people say, well, that's a spiritual gift, and I just don't have that one, so I just can't do that. That's a lie. You've been lied to. Apparently, you've been connected with some of these um, uh, word of faith or whatever uh, charismatic nuts that, that say that everybody gets their little spiritual gifts, and you got to figure out which ones are yours, and that, that's a bunch of hooey. Because if you are a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you, you have the ability through the Holy Spirit in your connection to Him to know whether that spirit is a good one or a bad one. You can walk into a room and know if you're not welcome there. You can walk into a room and know the, the, the warfare that, that already has broke out because there be spirits in there that are not of the Holy Spirit that that uh, immediately you you feel that battle happen inside of you that contrition that 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 connection that says whoa boy there's something not right in here 
There have been plenty of places that you've gone to where you walked in and you got a chill even in 100 degree weather. You walked in and you said, nah, something's off. Something ain't right here. There's people that you've come into contact with you've never met before, but you had that feeling in your soul that said, nah, there's something not right about this person. Well, they were eager to talk to you. But you and you talked to them in politeness of the engagement, but you knew inside of you now there's something off here. That's the kind of spiritual warfare that's existent in our world today. That's the kind of spiritual warfare that's happening inside of your church. And on a regular basis, I promise you, that's the kind of thing because the multitude that believe themselves to be Christians that very well may not be are going to be bringing all kinds of other spirits into the house. That The multitude of people that are Christian that are struggling through their, their, their heart and their connection, they're battling with the, the draw from other spirits and not listening to the Holy Spirit inside of them to help them and guide them through the challenge that they're facing by some other spirit. That's coming into your house. And so you, you realize that that, that there is a great spiritual warfare that exists at any given time in the house of God as well as the other places that you go to. Because if you're a child of God, wherever you're going, you're bringing the Holy Spirit with you and the plethora of other spirits that are opposed to the Holy Spirit are going to not like you. <laughs> They're going to not want to be around you. And they're going to seek to manipulate you if they possibly can. And that is something you have got to be prepared. I'm glad that he gave us this day for this, this lesson because most believers are not prepared for this. They're not prepared to fight that good fight. Often they'll fall to it. They're not prepared to, to even understand it because no one's ever taught it. You're getting it today, guys. There is no great thing if the devil's ministers will also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. The, the one greatest thing that the Apostle Paul could possibly warn this, this church about is to say, look out, guys. The devil's right on your doorstep. And he's sitting right on the front pew. And he, he actually, that old devil enjoys coming to church on Sunday to see who he can manipulate and draw away from the teachings of God. The devil just rejoices in, in the work that he can do in any given church that he shows up in to try and manipulate the hearts of the people through the pulpit or through the music or through through the, the teachings from the different classrooms. He, he rejoices in, in the opportunity to be able to manipulate anybody. And his first, his first goal is the youth. Because if he can manipulate the youth, then he can destroy a generation. His second goal is the whole body by manipulation of, of song, by manipulation of sound and music. <laughs> That's evident through a lot of these other places in, in, in the society today. And, and his third goal is the alteration of the gospel that is being preached unto another gospel so that the people don't see the true Jesus. Get prepared, guys. Get prepared. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this place in Scripture. We thank you for the warning that you have given us and pray that we would be strong enough to be able to recognize it as it begins to happen in the manipulation of what these other spirits may try to draw us into that we would be a people strong enough to be able to fight back and stay true to our Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. But Father, I, I'm fairly certain that most including myself, have fallen to these spirits at any given time, Lord, and have had to be brought back. We thank you for bringing us back, for never giving up on us. But I also fear that there are a lot of people who remain lost in those spirits because even though they made a, a, a profession of, of faith about you, they've never truly received the Holy Spirit. They've never truly received Jesus as their Savior. They've just gone through the motions and Father, there's nothing more heartbreaking to consider than that. But, Lord, 
the nature of our churches today and the darkness of this nation today do reveal that there are a lot of things that need to be taught that aren't being taught because we're Laodicean. Help us, Lord. Change us by thy spirit, Lord. Make us and mold us into what we must become in order to see the world change for Christ. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name today. Amen. Well, guys, God bless you. Keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And I'll catch you tomorrow for chapter 12. So I would encourage you to finish reading through uh, chapter number 11. There's a lot of great stuff that is that is there. But we'll talk about uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh tomorrow and, and a few other things that are just truly good. So until then, I'll catch you later.